Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea here, joined with Jim Wilson, the high school sports editor for the Telegram and Gazette and Home Team Magazine. And really, another big week in the books. But what we mean right now is what it means is we're at the midway point of the season. We got an eight game regular season. We've played four games and things shaking out. One of the things that stands out to me is all the new quarterbacks we saw last week. We'll start with Fitchburg. Sal Figueroa getting the start for Fitchburg. Fitchburg beat Shrewsbury in large part to the play of Figueroa. He gives that offense a completely different dynamic. He's a running quarterback. He's a run first guy, but he's a scat back. He's 140, like a water bug quickness. You have a 287 pound fullback in Isis. You have uh, with Marrero, you have a 190, 195 pound tailback who's strong, 5'10". So now you really almost have thunder, thunder, lightning. They're tough to defend. Right. They've, their defense has always done a good job keeping games, you know, not close. So if they have that kind of explosive point on offense, like back, if you go back to the years, go to Jeremy Kimber and Darius Flowers, those guys that when they're under center, they can make plays happen. It's, I'm curious if they have that same type of player now. And that's the feeling up there is, okay, we did this with Flowers a year ago when we, when we switched quarterbacks. He got the ball rolling. He got us rolling. Now they think maybe the same thing's going to happen with Figueroa, who's got him rolling now through two games. He, got, he put points in the ball, which has been tough for Fitchburg to do all season. So they have that. That's got to be a plus for him. Watch you said Dan Turgeon, they, they have a strange story about how Dan Turgeon came into the game as the quarterback for Watch you said Their number one quarterback goes to the doctor on Friday, expected to play. Doctor says, no, you can't play. So the number two quarterback starts. He gets hurt in the first series. The number three and four quarterbacks are freshmen. So Mike Dobzinski says, I can't put a freshman in there. I got Dan Turgeon. He's a junior running back. In eighth grade, he was a quarterback. He hasn't taken a snap since eighth grade. Puts him in under center. Turgeon was awesome. They lose that game by one point. He was phenomenal in driving Wachusett, ball control. At one point in the third quarter, they had three third downs in a row. They ran the same play every time. They ran a bootleg every time. Every time, Turgeon kept it, and he got a first down against that Lemonster defense. You know, they're so fast, so big, so good. Right. And your key word there was ball control and you'll run the ball, which is when you talk about a quarterback at Wachusett, Dobzinski, that's heaven. That's what he needs. So that's perfect for him. Don't make any mistakes. Keep the ball, keep the, you know, manage the clock, try to control the ball. You know, he's not being asked to go out there and throw 15, 10, 20 times a game and throw for 400 yards. You just want to get, you know, make the big pass when it's key. Like a third and long, hit somebody on a slant pattern for a good, for a good game. But really, I mean, if he can tuck the ball and run, that, that's just another weapon he has in the backfield. And, and just like your point there about just even ball security, first two snaps he fumbles. And then to have the poise to collect yourself and then the rest of the way he was great, whether he was under center and they even put him in the shotgun a couple times. You know, as an eight, you're not, you haven't done that since eighth grade. People take it for granted, that center quarterback exchange. It's not as easy as it looks. It's not as routine as it looks. I just, my hat goes off to Dan Turgeon. Center butts are taller off the ground <laughs> in eighth grade. That's true. And a little bigger. <laughs> Seamus Leary at St. Saint, at Saint Peter Marion. He's out. He hurts his knee. So he's done for the year. Now, this is a completely different team. Yeah. So now they bring in Danny Mom. He's a sophomore. He's really talented, got a great arm. But you don't have the leadership. You don't have the poise. You don't have the command of the offense. You don't have the guy who reads defenses, who's that dual threat to run and throw, who possibly has the strongest arm in Central Mass, and Seamus Leary. It's, I know it's frustrating for Leary, heartbreaking for uh, his teammates and for him and his family as well because he worked so hard, so hard yeah. to get back, to rehab that, and get back to where he could lead this team, and they were really expecting a big run this season. And they could, you know, that's, you're right. I mean, he worked so hard. I talked to him over the summer. He was, they were out, you know, 4th of July doing passing camps and things like that, trying to get a rhythm with the receivers. So I really, I hate to see that happen to him because I know how hard he worked and what he did you know, between all the different, you know, places he went to get better. Yeah. But having, mom, like you said, mom's going to be a good quarterback, I don't know about right now, especially with the schedule they play. Right now, they're on the outside looking in the playoffs and the power rankings. And, and by the way, your first game, go up and try to beat Doherty. Right. It's a tough task. I yeah. mean, Doherty saw that sophomore quarterback, next big thing under center. They just had that red light going. They were ready to just charge in. Yeah, you look at that Doherty defensive line and the linebackers and, and Steve Bachalio, that attacking style defense. You're right. They're looking at that and saying, hey, we got blood in the water, a couple sharks, and boom, they're sending the house. So, Really tough to make your debut as a sophomore against that I'm curious to see what they do going forward. Because they have a tough schedule. And like I said, they're chasing points now. So, but, the, but at least they know going forward, mom's the guy to try to lead them there. Uh, they get Baldino back this week, from what I understand. So I think that will be a big asset to him. He's going he's to be a workhorse for him. Keep the, keep, keep the pressure off mom. I think, I think St. Peter Man should be fine, but it might take a couple series to get in a rhythm. Ryan Carey, another running back for him, carried the load job. last week. He was awesome. I thought he was a phenomenal running back. And you can't overstate what he did and how he kept him in that game because he ran so hard. I'm sure.
by the end of that night when he went to try to brush his teeth, it hurt to just lift his arms up like this because he literally and figuratively was shouldering the load on offense and just trying to run through tacklers, three and four tacklers. So he showed me a lot in that game. Uh, and Doherty, too. It's a great win for Doherty to continue and to go undefeated and to do it on special teams, offense, and defense. Yeah, they did need, they need Vash to run for 200 yards. They, like you said, they got a big special teams pickup. You know, by Ricky Webster, that was a huge game from, you know, especially early, sort of set the tone, gave them some breathing room. They weren't, they weren't in a dogfight till the third quarter. They got that, and they were able to really, you know, control the game and, and get the points when they needed to. We're going to go into some of the, the power rankings. We're going to go into some of the scenarios now because we're at the midway point of this season. But one of the biggest storylines for you and I talking, Shepherd Hill, Division Four, arguably the best team in Division Four. They're not going to make the playoffs. No, I don't see and the way that we look, we look at it, you and I both, Shepherd Hill doesn't make the playoffs, and they're the best team right. in Division Four. So they're penalized for playing up. They open the season playing St. John's, We're number one, number one at the time. Lemonster, number one no, at the time. Two. St. Lemonster was number Lemonster, one. Lemonster, number one at the time. St. John's, number two. two. So they open up with St. John's, Lemonster. Then they played Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, which was a ranked team at some point, and they only lost to them by a point. And then they played Neshoba and lose number last four. week. So it's all Division Two teams, all playing up. Number one team, number two team, number four team, and now Shrewsbury's in the top ten, and they're not going to make the playoffs. So the moral of the story is don't play up. Don't play a challenging schedule, which Boy. I hate, absolutely hate, because as a Central Mass football fan, I want to see uh, Shepherd Hill and Lemonster. I want to see Shepherd Hill and St. John's. I want to see the best teams play right. each other. But in this scenario... Why are you going to do it? Auburn always played up. They always played uh, Shrewsbury, always played teams ahead of them. Where is the incentive to do that? We're still talking about those that the, the never was game between Auburn and, Mil and Neshoba from a couple of years ago. The two perfect teams and everything, you want to see them go at it. So I think having that, you know, I'd hate to see this, you know, lead to coaches just, why bother going out when they get punished for it? Right. Because like I said, Shepherd Hill, I think they have three, three power ranking points that puts them down at the bottom of Division Four. They're chasing points, so I don't know if I haven't, I'm not great at math, which is why I'm mush mushing my way through TV. <laughs> but you know, I, I, it's hard for them, especially the schedule they have left, to pick up those points. So do, do they look at? I mean, right now they wanted to play up, and I give them tons of credit for doing that. I wish I see it all the time in hockey, you know, teams like that. I wish they played better teams because I'd rather go into the playoffs 12 and 8 right. and tested than right. 18 and 2 with a bunch of you know cream puffs. Right. I'll use that. You know, Rossi. Exactly. You know so, what these are. <laughs> So I think having that, I mean, with Shepherd Hill, when they moved from the Swickle to the Midwatch, that was enough of a bump in their schedule to begin with. Because they're playing tougher teams like Lemonster and Wachusett, you know, on a weekly basis because they had to because they're league games now. Right. But then they go out and find Shepherd, uh, for St. John's, rather, they, they, didn't, they didn't dodge anybody. And right. I give them a lot of credit for that. I hate to see the fact that they're punished for it. By now, they're not, you know, going to play in non-playoff games at the end of the season. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like it either. I don't like the whole message that it sends. And you want, as a sports fan and as a Central Mass football fan, I want to see the best teams, the top teams playing each other, and there's just no incentive to do that now. I, the way I know Chris Lindstrom, it's not going to change his way of thinking. He's still going to want to play the right. top teams in the area, and he's going to want to challenge his kids, and, and I love that. I love that attitude. Um, we'll look at a couple games coming up this week, and then we'll get quickly into the power rankings. We'll go through these quickly, but Marlboro to Shoba is going to be a really good game, really good game. Yeah, I've liked, we've talked about the show about the last couple weeks, and I, you know, I, I was looking at that. I get a lot of crap this week because you know you, you can't pick against the team because if you pick against them, you're you're they hate you. Oh, right. you hate you. Are you hating the show? What's up? I just talked them up last week with big time on this because I think they're a great team. But I'm looking at the Shepherd Hill game, thinking there's no way that Lindstrom and Dugan and that coaching staff will let that team go 0-4. The Shoba handled them. I mean, it's been a while since they, but they, they, they really had no problem. They matched up well on the lines. Yep. They didn't let the double wing offense get you know bother them because they're big enough to prevent those kind of runs. So I think the show had a really good win last week, and they, they proved. I mean, I had I think I had them third in my poll. I think they're just they're, they're a fantastic team. Yes. I just thought Shepherd Hill had you know had that spark. I, I thought too much of a sports writer as it did as, as, as analyzing the football game, but I think the Marlboro's another tough test for them. Marlboro's defense they're sort of you know, quietly down there. You know, I know Mahoney likes to talk about being tucked in that 495 barricade, sort of <laughs> away from people, sort of under the radar. They have one of the best defenses in Central Mass, if not the state. I think, you know, you know, Capadona is a great player. He's a game breaker for them. They got their hands full. I think that's, being, that's probably the best game of the week. And they're similar teams. Physically, they're right. similar teams, similar styles in terms of speed. They have some size, but they're not monsters across the board. Grafton at Auburn is an interesting game to me. Auburn is, I think, you know, they're over, but this is a better team than their record would indicate. And with that coaching staff, you know they're going to come loaded for bear. Grafton trying to come back after a yeah. tough loss. Uh, you know, and again, they're going to get, they're going to try to get things going. Auburn has the one victory this season, but 
This is a, another one that I, I like this matchup. This is one I'd love to go watch. This is a good pride game, sort of like, you know, like you said, we're halfway through the season. This is a set the tone week. They want, I think Auburn knows they, you know, they need, if they make the playoffs, they need some help and they need to break the ship fast. A win over Grafton with a great, you know, good running back in O'Brien. I think that's, you know, Milan Fowler was there, you know, one of the best, best secondary guys around. I think having that, you know, win over the, them really just gives them a lot more confidence they start playing like the Auburn team as, as, as they were before. But Grafton's tough. They had a lot of tough losses. They, they could easily be 4 0. Battle for Shrewsbury. St. John's and Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury coming off that tough loss to Fitchburg a week ago. They made great adjust adjustments because in the first half of that game, Fitchburg controlled the clock, controlled the line of scrimmage. Then they made some adjustments at halftime, and Shrewsbury came out, and they were a field goal away from winning that. They had a shot to win it, missed a field goal right at the end. Uh, this one's a good matchup, too. Yeah. St. John's coming over that huge win over huge. Xavier, one of the top teams in the state of Connecticut. Exactly. I think having that win over you know, St. John's, we talked about them a couple weeks ago, just saying they don't have that like, dynamic playmaker, really, that they have been known for in the past. I think their defense is solid, but I think they're looking for that guy. They can just, like a Shane Combs, like they had last year, guy that can just carry the ball and watch him go. They don't really they don't they have established that, but I think they had a great win over Xavier in overtime. One of those gut check type of wins. I think Cassie's coming along really well in her center. I you know I think but you like I said Shrewsbury's playing the last good good last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. The results aren't there on the scoreboard, but they like you have to like what they see. They, I think they, if they they know if they win against St. John's. Not a lot of people talk about their start. Right. Well, this is, this this is this their is, win. This is the emotional right. game. This is the the whole rivalry game. Looking at these power rankings quickly in Division Four. Uh, what's standing out, you and I talking about this before the show. Division four, the top four teams, remember, in each division to make the playoffs. If the season were to end today, there's still four more weeks, but if the season were to end today, St. Peter's, holy name, on the outside right. looking in. They would not make the playoffs. It would be Tantasqua, Doherty, Grafton, and Nipmuc. So, I mean, I, I, that to me opens some eyes that, that a team like St. Peter's and even Holy Name that's won two straight right. would not be in on the playoffs. And like you said, it's early. So a couple wins here and there. You look at the schedule. You know, if you, they win this game, they pick up 15, 16 points and so on. Right. So a lot of stuff changes. But, yeah, right now this is, this is a good benchmark to see where people stand at having that, you know, kind of, you know, remember, they're only the top four teams. Right. I look at a Division two, and at the, end, at the end of the day, no matter what they are now, but you have four teams making the playoffs, but just have, like, you have Lemonston, Neshoba, Marlboro, St. John's, Wachusett. Those are five right. good teams. And I'm not even talking about like the teams like Algonquin, North Middlesex that can make a run. Right. And that's this is somebody going home that in the fifth spot that doesn't deserve it. Right. And right now that's Wachusett. Wachusett's on the outside. Algonquin would be actually the fifth spot and Wachusett would be the sixth spot. Uh, when you look at Division 5 too, again, couple teams, Oakmont, Clinton, right. good teams, pretty good starts, pretty good wins, and they would not make the playoffs right now if the season ended today. It's it's it's, it's I mean, you have Lester roll run the table, but yeah, you have those you have those, you know, Oakmont I'm a little late to the party. I mean, they had some good wins the last couple weeks. I think, you know, they're starting to put things together. I think they'll be up there. But, how, but I mean, they're not going to leapfrog Northbridge. And Northbridge is number two in these power, this, these power rankings. Yeah, which the way the math crazy. Because Leicester is picking up wins, you know, the, the bonus point wins from South and Burnco. So, right now, Leicester's number one. Marlboro's number two. Tingsboro's, Tingsboro and Uxbridge are tied for the third spot. You know, Oakmont needs to get some wins fast because those are going to be two tough teams to leap, leapfrog. Yeah, and Uxbridge is playing with a lot of confidence now. That's the one thing now. Uxbridge coming off a couple big victories. Right. A couple Find times a where they, and they got Mike their Cohen. offense really cranked up and rolling now. So now you're talking about a team with confidence that probably one or two more wins and they've clinched a right. spot in there and they've pushed a team like Clinton out. So it's it's interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Division 6 to kind of break it down. Uh, what you see there and who's right now, Monty Tech and, and Air Shirley on the outside. But West Boylston, Mike Ross yep. has got them rolling. They're a playoff team right now. Yeah, usual suspects like Littleton you know, in the, in, uh, Valley Tech are in right now. St. Bernard's, a 4-0, they're having a great season. A lot, a lot of people are talking about St. Bernard's. A lot of great wins so far. I like what they're doing up there. They have a great offense. And, you know, I think they, they can make some noise in that division, too. Because I don't think in any – across the board – there's not one team that's like just a gorilla. I mean, Northbridge in that Northbridge. division. But other than that, there's not one team that, okay, well, they're going to play in the Super Bowl. Right. And I, I, love, that. I love that kind of wide open. Right. My picks hate it. but you know. Right, and the, and the people you pick against hate oh. it. If we were going to go to my, my ultimate system of taking the top four teams in Central Mass, no matter what division, Northbridge would be in there. Yes. And I would love it because Northbridge could hang. You know, maybe they couldn't play Division Two for an entire season because it might wear them down physically. They could play two games in a row against the Lemons, right. St. John's, Neshoba, Marlboro. I would love to see that. I right. mean, that, that's what you want to see as a, as a fan of this sport and you and I covering these teams and, and knowing what Northbridge has. They're a Division Five team. They have Division Two talent. They don't have the numbers of boys. You know, it's one no. of the tiniest schools, but they have the talent. You only need 11. You only need 11. That's all you need. They can play with those teams. So I would love to see it, but 
Watch Houston Shepherd Hill. One more game we didn't talk about coming oh, up this week, and game. that's going to be a good game too. Just two physical teams. A lot of, a lot of people limping after that game. I think that's going to be just a, just a big, you know, big atomic bomb at the at the line of scrimmage, and whoever you know the smoke clears, whoever's left standing, someone's going to run through. It's going to be a great Smash Mouth game. I love that kind of game. Two teams desperate for a win. It'll take we'll about see. 15 minutes to play. <laughs> we'll see how it shakes out. Jim Wilson from the Telegram and Gazette. I'm Kevin Shea. Thanks for watching, everyone. More of the Frenzy Extras coming your way right after this.